It is currently the 12th of May 2013 and we are continuing to watch Tropical Cyclone Mahasin pulling through the Bay of Bengal here just towards the east of Sri Lanka. Today, uh, consolidating a little bit more. You don't see that huge outflow field we were seeing yesterday, but the center of circulation is winding up a little bit more so and thus we are seeing well, more of an intensity. Current pressure actually right around 985 HPA. Winds currently gusting upwards of about 150 kilometers per hour, and as it is intensifies, could very well be nearing right around 180 to 190. And now these winds are right near the center of circulation. We actually see a big flare up of convection on the northwestern periphery. The outflow on the northern periphery is still here and allowing for further intensification. And then we have the moisture inflow coming in from the south. Actually, let's just look at the um, water vapor imagery here and you can still see that moisture coming in. Now we do have that dryer in the north and the dryer over India and that's going to counter this keep it at a moderate intensity so even though we do have a abundant amount of moisture under it uh, and we do have very warm sea surface temperatures the flip side of that is the fact that there is a dry air over India and also it's going to start and encounter some vertical wind shear off towards the north we can actually follow this uh, five to ten knots off here towards the east you see that very good outflow but then look onto the northern portions of the Bay of Bengal 20 to 30 knots of vertical wind shear and anything more than 15 it starts to disrupt so I do believe as the farther it gets north it, it, it's going to intensify in this really good zone here but then off in here you very well could see it start to weaken and slowly fall apart gradually. Now, it, it really expecting the storm to get up to the severe cyclonic intensity, about the equivalent of a weak typhoon, before it does make a possible landfall. And where it's going right now, well, we have to remember there's a thermal low over India here, just off towards north. We're starting up the southwest monsoon, or slowly getting there. Um, and that's going to help usher this towards north. We have a high pressure over here. We have another low over here. It's going to want to fall off there towards the north, north, east. Well, uh, really around Bangladesh, Burma, uh, or Myanmar, and northeastern portions of India. These are the places, well, highest at risk for possible development or possible landfall at this time. And this is another look, actually, uh, from the Time Meteorological Department, just showing uh, their analysis of the, the surface area around here. You have that thermal low. You have that high pressure off here towards northeast, the high pressure ridge to the west see that coming up and following into that thermal low. So with that said though, right now actually the Joint Typhoon Warning Center are expecting that landfall there around Bangladesh. And to remind you, this is not an official track. The official track is from the uh, India Meteorological Department for some reason. While I'm trying my hardest to get on that site today, I think it's overloaded and has crashed. So uh, just go check there. I'll put the link down below if you want to go check out the official track. Very similar to this. Uh, currently winds 50, gusting up to 65 knots. Uh, they do expect it all also to continue to intensify right up to about the 100 and about 80 kilometer per hour threshold here going into the mid part of your week. We're talking about, well, here it's Sunday, uh, Monday on the 13th, 15th is Tuesday, and the 16th we go into Wednesday early morning, seeing those winds really gusting up there, making that landfall, well, right around the Bangladesh area. But anybody here uh, into northeastern India. You really got to watch out for this. Uh, it possibly could drift a little bit farther there towards the west, especially if that thermal load decides to strengthen a little bit more, could impact you. If the uh, high pressure ridge, though, even farther towards the west, or if that low weakens, uh, it very well could swing back here towards Miramar. So, my cone of air, well, uh, basically, kind of what I just put right in here, I probably would widen it up a little bit there towards the east, and there towards the west, but. Um, I don't think uh, it, all the way out here towards Chennai, you're definitely going to be out of it, but you're still going to be seeing some of these outflow bands that are going to be pushing through, and even across much of Sri Lanka as well, uh, the outflow coming into the system, you're going to see the heavy rainfall possibly coming out of it, since it is a well, fairly broad storm system. Now that you've heard my thoughts on it, though, let's take a look at some of the models. This is from the NavGem, uh, showing it going through here on Sunday into Monday. They actually expect that uh, move a little bit farther towards the west, uh, really pulling it off there into northeastern India, making that landfall, but skimming the coast while doing so, which very well uh, could be pushing all this on shore. If we zoom in just slightly, it does push along the coastline here. Don't forget that those winds uh, pushing around the right front quadrant very well could push a, a storm surge on the coastal areas, cause some coastal flooding, but also we're going to see that 
possibly bring some continuous heavy rain as it does skim along the coastal regions there, falling into that thermal low uh, over northern portions of India, like I just mentioned. Let's compare this up with GFS. Now, this model was originally very bullish, but now has backed off. We can see it come through. It keeps it relatively weak, kind of the flip side of the spectrum. And uh, this one takes into account that vertical wind shear much, much more and just totally disrupts it and throws it in the Miramar. Uh, and really just blows it apart and just brings an abundant and amount of heavy rain. I think this scenario as well uh, still could result in some flooding. The other one being much, much worse because it would result in storm surge and flooding, but this one would still bring the risk of some significant flooding out here in the Bangladesh and Miramar. I remember back in 1991, well, that was the site of one of the worst natural disasters in recorded history. I, I do realize somebody actually mentioned yesterday that there has been a lot of um, of recovery and a lot of efforts to try to uh, put in cyclone shelters. If you go on to uh, Google and just type in Bangladesh cyclone shelters, you can find an abundant amount of these, usually funded by the World Bank after the uh, 1991 disaster, and just some places people can go to take ref. But as far as the models go, the middle ground kind of goes to the European model, the high resolution one that I often say I really do like. and at least up from weather underground here, you have an abundant amount of options, but it expects this to intensify through Monday into Tuesday. Also takes into account the vertical wind shear and that drier inflow, which you can see the most of the moisture is in the northeastern quadrant of this, mainly due to that vertical wind shear coming in, blowing it off there towards the side, but also the dry air on the northern periphery. Uh, Getting up to that intensity of a equivalent of a very weak typhoon before it starts to fall apart here back to that tropical storm intensity uh, or a cyclonic storm intensity. But um, you can still see it does continue to carry that moisture in and really flares up just for a brief portion there, as you saw just a second ago. But uh, then pushing off there, falling slightly apart and moving into, um, well, Miramar and portions of Bangladesh here. Uh, so like I said, really, my cone of air would be off here towards northern India, across Bangladesh, and extending down through Myanmar. If it does go off in this direction, it's not going to be that intensity. If it does pull farther uh, towards the north and kind of runs into that thermal low, and if the vertical wind shear laxes off enough, uh, that would bring a strong storm out in here. So um, I think we're just going to have to continue to watch this one and just see how those factors come into play. Uh, really, most of the warnings, though, are pushing it into Bangladesh at this time. Uh, I would lean more towards this possible scenario if I had to choose one, but I am not an official agency by any means. So uh, just continue to check in there with the Indian Meteorology Department, and uh, if you can't get on there, Joint Typhoon Warning Center does put out uh, very good and accurate warnings as well. But uh, if anything, though, just take this from it, uh, this, if it does turn off here towards the northeast, we're still seeing these outflow bands. Even Chennai, you're going to get on this. Sri Lanka, some heavy rainfall. Look at northern India, uh, or in Indonesia, excuse me, the moisture inflow coming across much of Java. You're still going to be seeing this heavy rain, and even over there towards Thailand. This storm's a pretty wide swath, and it's bringing some heavy showers to most of you. So uh, going through the mid part of your week, just prepare for some localized flooding all across the regions here. Uh, and especially as you look off here towards Thailand and the Miramar, possibility of some flooding and even landslides to some of the higher and steeper elevations. But if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can uh, please post them down into the comment box below. And also check out the website at our Tropical Information Center. I will put the link for that down below as well if you're watching this on YouTube. Stay safe out there, everybody, and uh, thanks for watching.